I know people are a little nervous about things, and I know that they would like to be reassured. And I sincerely hope that the other speakers will provide that reassurance. <laughs> but really, let's face up to facts. We are at the knife's edge. All around us, there's a seething mass of discontent, and we live on these little islands of prosperity. We build these high walls around our houses. We employ chokidars. We have defense housing societies. And yet, once you move outside of that, you see the real Pakistan, and you see that it is a mass of people who don't have what it takes to live a civilized life. So, I am at a point where I think that there's a tsunami headed towards us. It's going to be a clerical tsunami. It's not going to be a tsunami that will address what the real problem is, which is deprivation. It will come from deprivation, but it will not move so as to remove the causes of that deprivation. It will be faith-driven. All you have to do is to listen to what is being said in the mosque today across the country. In fact, Khalid and I did a little project to understand what is being said across the villages of Punjab. And we've gone, we've recorded what is being said over there, heard them, understood them, and have come to this conclusion that there is something big coming our way. And so the ones who don't want to face it well, I suppose you could leave. And the ones who do want to face it will have to figure out how they're going to survive. In a sense, it's inevitable because it is a consequence of Pakistan having been born into a state of ideological confusion. You see, we liberals who are in this room, we refer to the lost dream of qaid e azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And say that on his August 11th speech, he said, you can go to your temples, you can go to your mosque, etc., etc. Everybody knows all that. But, Pakistan was born out of the two-nation theory, and let's not forget that. That theory said that there are two peoples who live on this subcontinent. There are Hindus and Muslims. They cannot live together anymore. Hindus have a different culture, they have a different... They eat differently, they have different heroes, this, that, and that. They're different from us. We Muslims are going to live separate from them. It'll be Nirvana, it'll be Jannah. And then it didn't turn out. 1971 proved that the two-nation theory was wrong. It simply is. But somehow we muddled through that. And today we are in a position where we again have to face the same question, what is Pakistan all about? The two-nation theory provides no help in understanding that. And therefore, we have to reimagine Pakistan if Pakistan is to survive. Reimagine it so that it is inclusive, so that it doesn't matter who you are, which province you come from, which religion or which sect you belong to. But that's a long way away. And who am I to tell this to all the liberal fascists over here? Now, this morning I was called a liberal fascist for having said this by Muhtarma Rahila, Rahila Qazi, who is the daughter of Qazi Hussain Ahmad, who, as you know, is the head of the Jamaat e Islami. And I asked her, I said, Muhtarma, mujhe zara ye batai, aapne mujhe, mujhe liberal fascist ka hai, ye ek aisi istila hai, jo mainne pehle kabhi suni nahi, tum zara batai, ek iske maane kya hai. To unka jawab ye tha, ke wo loog jo humare mazhabi iqtar se iqtalaaf karte hain, wo loog asal pakistani nahi hai, wo loog liberal fascist hain. To mainne jawab mein ye kaha, ke آپ کے مذہبی اقدار آخر ہیں کیا اس واسطے کہ آپ لوگ جو ہیں وہ ایک دوسرے کے پیچھے نماز بھی نہیں پڑھ سکتے ہیں ایک دوسرے کی مساجد میں جا کر خودکش چھوڑتے ہیں ایک یہاں جتنے ہم نے امام بارگاہوں پہ حملے دیکھے ہیں جتنی درباروں کو ہم نے نشانہ بنتے ہوئے دیکھا ہے تو آپ کے اقدار آخر ہیں کیا and her job was and her 
her, her reply was, precisely because you say this, you're a liberal fascist because you are telling us that we are divided when in fact we are not. Well, the theocracy is uh, perhaps inevitable. But then the question is, what kind of a theocracy will it be? Will it be one that subscribes to the Hanafi school, the Shafi school, the Maliki school, the Ambali school? Which one? Because they've never tolerated each other for too long, have they? Will it be Deobandi or Barelvi? Oh, they, they're blowing each other up. But they are reunited on one thing. Death to, Salam, to Salman Tasir and that Mumtaz Qadri is a hero. So on some things they are united. They are united against people like you and me. But then they will slit each other's throat once they have slit ours. How are we to avoid this fate? Or can we avoid this fate? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But for the believers in this audience, I'd say, get down on your knees and pray for two miracles. The first is that we recognize that our nation, our country is under threat. It's an existential, it's an existentialist threat. And this is particularly an appeal to the Pakistan army which is directly responsible for having created the state of affairs as they exist at the present time. There are Muslim countries all over the world. It's not primarily a matter of faith. It's a matter of politics. It's a matter of having exploited religion in a way that has now endangered our survival. Let us remember that the Pakistan Army and the United States jointly engaged in 1979 in creating the greatest global jihad of history where the CIA and the ISI brought together the most militant, the most dangerous, the most hardened fighters from all over the globe. They trained them, they sent them to Afghanistan to defeat the Soviets. They won. And then, of course they could have been sent home. Of course they could have been sent back to Egypt or to Algeria or to wherever they came from, back to Uzbekistan. But our army needed them. We needed them to, quote, liberate Kashmir. And of course this is Kashmir day today, isn't it? February 5th. The town is closed. And we also needed them to make Afghanistan our backyard. After a while, they got out of control. We all know that. Today, it is these very people who are slitting the throats of their former mentors and their former supporters, the ones who trained them, the ones who sent them there. There is some realization in the army. It's coming, but will it come fast enough? And will the army realize that the threat to Pakistan is internal. It's, it's not something that you can deal with by making more atom bombs. Yes, now we've surpassed India in the number of atom bombs that we've got. Yeah. We've even got, we're even going to get more than Britain has. Yeah. So does that make us secure? Absolutely not. When the army starts realizing the fundamental mistake it has made, then we will be on the path to change. But that's not the only miracle that I want you to pray for. The other miracle I want is that we get a state. I don't mean a government only. I mean a state that's functioning, that can deliver justice, that can deliver equal opportunity, which can redistribute wealth in some equitable way which can actually tax citizens for the services that are provided because we don't pay taxes. The tax to GDP ratio in Pakistan is the lowest in the world, 9%. And above and beyond all else, I want you to pray that somehow we can contain the population bomb. Look, I grew up in this city 
I went to school in this city like some of my school friends were sitting in the audience. And at that time, you remember, our city was a beautiful little city. It had a million people. And that million has become 18 million today. There is no country in the world, no city in the world, that can handle a population growth that's 18 times over a period of, well, what, 40 years or so. So folks, I've said what I've said. I'm sorry if I depressed you, but I say that there is a way out. That way out is for us to get together and to put a coherent program of action. And that action has to be along these lines. We cannot try and solve the rest of the problems of the world. Okay, what's happened in Kashmir is awful. What's happening in Palestine is awful. What America did in Iraq is worthy of the strongest condemnation. But that's their problems. We, we, we fully sympathize with everybody who's been afflicted, who's been, who's been uh, trampled upon by America, by everybody else. But we have to look after our own selves. That's where we got to start. Thank you.